The 10 Basic Laws of Trading Any Financial Market Forex, Futures, Stocks, Options, and Crypto Rules for Consistent Successful Trading for Beginners and Seasoned Traders Copyright 2023, J.F. Reedy, All Rights Reserved Dedication To my dear readers, this book is dedicated to you, the aspiring traders who seek to understand the intricacies of trading in a simple and straightforward manner. As someone who has experienced both the highs and lows of the trading industry, I understand the importance of having a strong foundation in the basic principles of trading. Through this book, I hope to empower you with the knowledge and tools necessary to make informed decisions and minimize risk. My goal is to provide you with a comprehensive guide to the 10 basic laws of trading, explained in a way that is easy to understand and apply. I sincerely hope that this book will help you achieve your trading goals and lead you to long-term success. Thank you for joining me on this journey, and I wish you all the best in your trading endeavors. Sincerely, J.F. Reedy. Introduction. In the vast and dynamic world of trading, success is not solely determined by luck or chance. It is rooted in understanding and adhering to a set of fundamental principles that form the backbone of successful trading. Whether you are interested in trading stocks, forex, futures, options, or any other financial asset, this book is your comprehensive guide to understanding the foundational principles that drive successful trading in any financial market. Financial markets have long fascinated individuals with their potential for wealth creation and financial independence. The markets have historically been perceived as enigmatic and exclusive domains, filled with complex jargon, intricate strategies, and sophisticated analyses. Navigating these markets can be daunting for newcomers and experienced traders alike. However, the aim of this book is to demystify trading and present these fundamental laws in simple and accessible language. I believe that anyone can become a successful trader by understanding and applying these laws, regardless of their background or level of experience. Each chapter of this book will introduce one of the ten laws, breaking it down into its core components and explaining how it relates to the trading process. From risk management and emotional control, market psychology, to common challenges faced and how to overcome them, these laws encompass the key aspects that govern successful trading. Throughout this journey, I will share practical examples and actionable insights to help you internalize these laws and apply them to your trading endeavors. My goal is to empower you with the knowledge and tools necessary to make informed decisions, manage risks effectively, and navigate the ever-changing landscape of financial markets. In addition to exploring the laws themselves, I will address common challenges faced by traders and provide guidance on overcoming them, delving into the psychology of trading, helping you develop the discipline and emotional control necessary to navigate the inevitable ups and downs of the market. Remember, trading is not a destination, but a continuous learning process. By embracing these laws and incorporating them into your trading routine and plan, you will lay a solid foundation for your trading journey. As you embark on this exploration, I encourage you to approach each chapter with an open mind and a commitment to implement these principles in your trading practice. It is important to recognize that trading is not a quick path to overnight wealth. Instead, it is a journey that requires continuous learning, adaptation, and honing of skills. The 10 laws of trading are not a definitive formula for success, but rather a roadmap to guide you on your trading journey. I encourage you to approach each chapter with an open mind and a commitment to integrating these principles into your trading plan and routine. May these laws become your guiding compass, leading you toward success and profitability in the dynamic world of trading. Importance of the 10 Laws of Trading There are lots of compelling reasons why incorporating the 10 laws of trading into your trading strategy can significantly enhance your chances of success, mitigate risks, and set you on a path towards consistent profitability in the financial markets. Incorporating the 10 laws of trading into your plan can greatly improve your chances of success and make trading safer and more profitable. These laws will help you. Have a clear and disciplined strategy, providing you with a structured framework for your trading activities. 
helping you develop a clear and disciplined strategy, eliminating impulsive decision-making, and reducing the impact of emotional biases that often lead to costly errors. Following the set rules will also ensure effective risk management by emphasizing the importance of risk management, teaching you how to identify and assess potential risks before entering trades. By implementing appropriate risk management techniques, such as setting stop-loss orders and adhering to proper position sizing, you can protect your capital and minimize the impact of unfavorable market movements. Following these trading rules will also lead to increased consistency in your trading strategy. By adhering to proven principles, you reduce the likelihood of making inconsistent or arbitrary trading decisions. This consistency enhances your ability to replicate successful trades and eliminates the detrimental effects of random or impulsive actions. You will also notice improved decision-making, following these rules by providing a systematic method to analyzing market conditions and identifying trade opportunities. By incorporating technical analysis, fundamental analysis, and an understanding of market psychology, you can make more informed and objective trading decisions. The rules will help ensure effective trade management. They will guide you in effectively managing your trades. From setting realistic profit targets to trailing stop-loss orders and adjusting positions based on market conditions, these principles help you maximize profits while minimizing potential losses. Not forgetting that they will also help enhance your trading psychology by addressing the psychological aspects of trading, highlighting the importance of discipline, patience, and controlling emotions. By developing a strong trading mindset and managing psychological biases, you can avoid common pitfalls such as overtrading, revenge trading, and fear of missing out. Incorporating these laws in your routine and plan ensures continuous learning and encourages a mindset of continuous learning and improvement. Trading is a dynamic field, and by embracing these principles, you commit to ongoing education, expanding your knowledge base, and refining your skills as a trader. Perhaps the most compelling reason to follow these rules is the pursuit of long-term sustainability. By adopting a disciplined and rule-based strategy, you set yourself on a path towards consistent profitability, enabling you to build and preserve wealth over time. By incorporating these rules into your trading plan, you create a solid foundation that fosters success and risk mitigation. These principles provide you with the necessary tools, strategies, and mindset to navigate the challenges and capitalize on the opportunities that the markets offer. In summary, Following the 10 laws of trading provides a structured and disciplined approach that reduces risks, improves decision-making, and increases the likelihood of consistent profitability in the financial markets. Rule 1. Overtrading. Do not overtrade. Overtrading is a common novice mistake. Traders feel like they know what the market is going to do, so they trade it. Overtrading is a situation where you as a trader start to execute an excessive number of trades, exceeding the limits of your trading plan and risk management strategy. This behavior often arises from emotional reactions to the market, such as fear of missing out on potential gains or trying to recover from losses quickly, hence revenge trading. Traders become too emotionally attached to their trades and begin to act impulsively instead of sticking to their trading plan. This can happen when traders experience a series of successful trades, leading them to believe they can continue to make profits by increasing their trading frequency. Overtrading can be dangerous because it can lead to increased risk exposure, higher trading costs, and reduced profitability. This behavior can lead to excessive trading commissions and fees, which can eat into profits and ultimately lead to significant losses. Overtrading can also lead to burnout and stress, which can negatively impact your mental and emotional health. Simplest explanation. Overtrading means placing too many trades, too often, and without a clear strategy or plan. It is like eating too much candy. It might feel good in the moment, but it can lead to problems in the long run. Overtrading can cause you to take unnecessary risk, make impulsive decisions, and incur losses that could have been avoided with a more disciplined approach to trading. Overtrading has several negative consequences, such as 
leading you to take positions that are not in line with your trading plan or risk management strategy, which increases your risk of significant losses. It leads to incurring more trading costs, such as commissions, spreads, and other fees, which can add up and eat into your profits, hence leading to higher trading costs. Overtrading can result in more losing trades than winning trades, which can ultimately reduce your profitability. To avoid overtrading, you should develop and stick to a clear trading plan and strategy, which includes a specific number of trades per day, week, or month. Create a trading plan that includes risk, management strategies, and stick to it. You should also set realistic profit targets and stop loss levels and avoid emotional decision-making while trading. Set stop-loss orders to limit potential losses and avoid emotional trading decisions based on fear or greed. Additionally, you can benefit from taking regular breaks, practicing mindfulness, and developing a long-term perspective on your trading goals. By maintaining discipline and avoiding overtrading, you can increase your chances of success and achieve consistent profitability over the long term, hence avoiding significant losses and a decrease in trading account value. For example, let's say you have a trading account with a balance of $10,000 and have been following a strategy that involves buying and selling stocks based on technical analysis signals. You have had some success with this strategy, and your account balance has increased to $12,000. However, you become overconfident and start to make trades more frequently. Even when there are no clear signals in the market, you start to take larger positions and makes more trades per day than you normally would. You start to experience some losses, but you keep making trades, hoping to recoup your losses. As a result, your account balance starts to decrease rapidly. You find yourself in a losing position, and now in a situation where you have lost a significant portion of your trading account, and it will take a long time to recover these losses. In this example, this overtrading behavior has led to significant losses and a decrease in your trading account value. You did not follow your trading plan and strategy. Instead, you became emotional and started to make trades based on gut instincts. This behavior is a hallmark of overtrading, and it can be detrimental to your long term success. Detailed example Suppose you are a trader who has just started trading in the stock market. You are excited about making profits and decide to invest all your savings in the market. You start buying and selling stocks frequently without a clear plan or strategy. You start with buying a stock at $50 per share, hoping to make a quick profit. The stock price rises to $55 per share. You decide to sell it for a quick profit, thinking it might not continue to rise. However, the price goes up to $60 per share after you sell, causing you to miss out on potential profits. Feeling disappointed because you sold too soon and missed out on the extra profit, you decide to invest in another stock without researching it thoroughly. You buy the stock at $70 per share, hoping that it will rise quickly. However, the price drops to $60 per share soon after. You panic and sell your shares, incurring a loss. You continue to repeat this pattern, buying and selling stocks frequently without a clear strategy or plan, and taking unnecessary risks. As a result, you start losing money and end up with lower profits than you would have if you had invested in a few good stocks with a clear plan. By buying and selling too many stocks too often without a clear plan or strategy, you take unnecessary risks and lose money. It is important to have a clear plan and strategy when trading and to avoid making impulsive decisions based on emotions or excitement. Overtrading can lead to unnecessary losses and should be avoided for successful trading. Summary. In conclusion, overtrading can be a significant problem for traders, especially those who are new to the markets. Buying and selling too many stocks, forex pairs, futures contracts, etc., too often without a clear plan or strategy, can lead to taking unnecessary risks and losses. Overtrading is often driven by emotions such as excitement, fear, or greed, rather than a disciplined approach to trading. It is essential to have a clear plan and strategy when trading and to avoid making impulsive decisions based on emotions. By practicing discipline and patience, you can avoid the pitfalls of overtrading and achieve long-term success in the markets. 
Therefore, it is crucial for you to understand the risks of overtrading and to develop a disciplined approach to trading to maximize your chances of success. Rule 2. Discipline. You must trade with focused discipline. As traders, we must follow our plan and our rules. Discipline refers to the ability to adhere to a set of rules, strategies, and risk management techniques consistently and methodically. A disciplined trader follows their trading plan and system without deviation, even in the face of market fluctuations or emotional reactions. Being a disciplined trader will help you avoid impulsive decisions, manage risk effectively, and stay focused on your long-term goals. It requires a strong mindset, patience, and the willingness to accept losses and learn from mistakes. Ultimately, discipline is a key element of successful trading and helps traders achieve consistent profitability over the long term. Simplest explanation. Discipline means being very careful and following the rules to make good decisions. Just like you have to follow the rules when you play a game, you also have to follow rules when you trade. It is important to think before you act and not let your feelings or excitement take over. Being disciplined means staying focused on your goals and not making rash decisions that can cause you to lose money and making smart decisions, even when the market is unpredictable and volatile. It is like being a very careful player who thinks about every move they make so they can win the game in the end. To trade with focused discipline, you must follow your plan. Follow your trade rules systematically. Trade logically, trade methodically, and manage your emotions. One important aspect of discipline in trading is having a clear trading plan that outlines your goals, risk tolerance, and strategies. This plan should be based on a thorough analysis of market data and should be updated regularly to reflect changes in market conditions. A well-designed trading plan can help you stay focused on your objectives and avoid making impulsive or emotional trades. Another key aspect of discipline in trading is managing risk. This involves setting stop-loss orders to limit potential losses and sticking to these orders even if market conditions turn against you. It also involves using appropriate position sizing and risk management strategies to ensure you do not put too much capital at risk in any one trade. Discipline requires a strong mindset that can withstand the ups and downs of the market. This involves staying focused on long-term goals, avoiding emotional reactions to short-term market movements, and maintaining a positive attitude even when facing setbacks. For example, Let's say that a trader has a strategy that involves buying a stock when it reaches a certain price level and selling it when it reaches a specific profit target. The trader has done his research and has determined this strategy has a high probability of success based on historical price data and market analysis. One day, the stock that he has been tracking finally reaches the desired price level, and he buys the stock according to his trading plan. However, a few days later, the stock drops in price and he becomes anxious and worried about losing money. At this point, he may be tempted to sell the stock and cut his losses, even though this action would violate his trading plan and strategy. However, a disciplined trader will resist this temptation and stick to his trading plan because he would have already set a stop-loss order, which would limit his losses to a predefined amount. The trader would also have predetermined his profit target and would have a plan in place to exit the trade when the stock reaches that target. In this example, the trader's discipline allowed him to follow his trading plan and strategy, even in the face of market fluctuations and emotional ups and downs. The trader's ability to stick to his plan and not deviate from it is a hallmark of discipline in trading, and it can help traders to achieve their long-term goals and objectives. Detailed example. Let's say you are a trader who uses a technical analysis strategy to trade stocks. You have identified a stock that you believe has strong potential for growth based on your analysis of the charts and market trends. You decide to buy 100 shares of the stock at $50 per share with a target sell price of $60 per share. However, you also set a stop loss at $45 per share to limit your potential losses if the stock's value drops unexpectedly. A few days later, the stock's value starts to fluctuate, 
and it drops to $47 per share. You start to feel worried and tempted to sell your shares to avoid any further losses. However, because you have a disciplined method to trading, you remind yourself of your original plan, strategy, and goals. You realize the stock's overall trend is still positive and that a small drop in price is a normal part of market fluctuations. You decide to stick to your plan and hold on to your shares rather than selling them out of fear. A few weeks later, the stock's value increases to $60 per share, reaching your target sell price. You sell your shares and make a profit of $1,000, which is exactly what you had planned. This is an example of discipline in trading. By sticking to your strategy and not letting your emotions or fear influence your decisions, you were able to achieve your goals and make a profit. You were also able to resist the temptation to sell your shares when the stock's value dropped and instead trusted your analysis and strategy. This is an important aspect of trading as it helps traders avoid impulsive decisions that can lead to losses and maintain a consistent approach to their trades. Summary Discipline is critical to success in trading. By developing a clear trading plan, managing risk, and maintaining a strong mindset, you increase your chances of success over the long term. We must follow our plan, yet it takes rules and discipline to follow our plan. In fact, it takes discipline to write a plan, trade systematically and logically, and manage our emotions. It is not possible to trade without emotion. Instead, we must manage our emotions. We must understand when our emotions help us or hurt us with our trading and when they hurt us, then we must set rules to prevent us from hurting ourselves emotionally and financially as traders. Rule 3. Protective Stop. Use a stop loss on every trade. A stop loss helps prevent a large losing trade. Using a protective stop in your trading means that you should utilize a stop-loss order to safeguard your positions from substantial losses. A stop-loss order is an order type that triggers an automatic closure of a position when the price of the underlying asset reaches a predetermined level, ensuring protection for your investments. The purpose of using a protective stop is to limit your risk in case the market moves against your position. By setting a stop-loss order, you can define the maximum amount of loss you are willing to accept before exiting the trade. This can help to prevent large losses and protect your trading capital. Simplest explanation. Using a protective stop means setting a predetermined level at which you will automatically exit a trade to limit your potential losses. This helps protect your trading account and prevents you from losing more money than you can afford. It is like wearing a seatbelt when you drive to protect yourself in case of an accident or putting on a helmet to protect yourself when you ride a bike. A protective stop is an essential risk management tool that every trader should use to help manage their risk and avoid big losses. For example, let's say a trader buys 100 shares of a stock at $50 per share and sets a stop loss order at $45 per share. If the price of the stock drops to $45, the stop-loss order will be triggered, and the trader's position will be automatically closed. This limits the trader's loss to $500 per share if one is trading stocks, regardless of how far the price of the stock continues to decline. That is, 100 shares x5 equals $500. Detailed example, let's say you are interested in buying shares of company X because you believe it will increase in value over time. The current market price for a share is $100, so you decide to buy 100 shares, spending $10,000 on this investment. After a few days, the market value of company X decreases by 10%, and the share price drops to $90. You begin to worry that this trend will continue, and you will end up losing money on your investment. However, you are hopeful the share price will rebound, so you decide to hold on to your shares. Unfortunately, over the next few days, the market value of company X continues to decrease and the share price falls to $80. You are now in a difficult position as you have lost $2,000 on this investment. You are unsure whether to sell your shares or hold on to them in hopes the price will eventually rise again. This is where using a protective stop loss can be incredibly helpful. 
If you had set a protective stop loss when you first purchased the shares, you could have automatically sold your shares when the price dropped to a certain level, limiting your losses. And if initially you had set a protective stop loss at $95 per share, you would have automatically sold your shares when the price fell to $95. This would have limited your losses to $500 instead of $2,000. This is why it is important to always use a protective stop loss when trading. By setting a predetermined price at which you will automatically sell your shares, you can limit your potential losses and protect your investment. This allows you to make informed decisions and manage your risk effectively while still giving you the opportunity to profit from your trades. Summary. Nevertheless, using a protective stop is a valuable tool for managing risk and protecting capital in trading. It is an essential part of risk management and can help you stay disciplined and focus on your long-term trading goals. It is important to note that stop-loss orders are not foolproof and are not always guaranteed to be executed at the specific price level. Especially during times of high market volatility, using a stop-loss order does not guarantee you will always make a profit or avoid losses. Market conditions can change rapidly, and stop-loss orders can be subject to slippage or market gaps. As a general rule, you should always consider using a Stop loss on every trade you make. This is because stop loss orders can help limit your risk exposure and prevent potentially large losses in the event of a sudden market move against your position. Practically, you should determine your stop loss level when you enter a trade and set your order accordingly. This requires you to identify key levels of support and resistance on the price chart and determine the maximum amount of loss you are willing to accept on the trade. There are several factors to consider when deciding where to set your stop-loss level. These may include the volatility of the market, the size of your position, and your overall risk tolerance. Some traders choose to use technical analysis tools to help identify optimal stop-loss levels, while others rely on their own judgment and experience. Rule 4. Emergencies. Do not trade when there are emergencies. Trading emergencies means you should avoid trading during situations where there is a significant disruption or crisis in the financial markets or in your trading environment. Trading emergencies can include events such as unexpected market volatility, technical issues with trading platforms, economic or political announcements, and natural disasters that affect the financial markets. During these situations, the markets may become highly volatile and unpredictable, making it difficult for traders to make informed decisions and increasing the risk of significant financial losses. Therefore, it is advisable to avoid trading during such emergencies and wait until the markets stabilize before resuming trading activities. This will allow you to make more informed trading decisions, protect your capital, and reduce your risk exposure. For example, suppose you are a trader who is monitoring the stock market during the day and suddenly, there is breaking news about a major natural disaster or political crisis that could potentially impact the stock market. The stock market starts to react to the news, and many stocks start to experience significant price movements. You may feel the urge to enter into trades to capitalize on the market movements, hoping to make a quick profit. However, this can be a big mistake. It is important to remember that trading during such times can be very risky, and there may be significant volatility and unpredictability in the markets. For example, in March 2020, when the COVID-19 pandemic first hit the world, many traders entered into trades without proper analysis or strategy, hoping to take advantage of the market movements. However, the markets were highly volatile, and many traders incurred significant losses. In such situations, it is essential to maintain discipline and not enter into trades without proper analysis or a clear strategy. Instead, take a step back and observe the markets to understand the impact of the event on the market movements. This will help you make informed decisions and avoid unnecessary risks. Moreover, it is also important to consider your personal safety and well-being during trading emergencies. If you are in an area affected by the crisis or natural disaster, it is best to focus on your safety and not put yourself in harm's way by trading in risky conditions. 
Trading emergencies includes but not limited to the following. Technology. Malfunction. You may experience a technology malfunction, such as a software glitch, internet connectivity issues, or a computer crash. This type of emergency can be detrimental to your ability to execute trades, monitor the market, and manage risk. Sudden market moves. The market can sometimes experience sudden and unexpected moves, such as a news announcement or a geopolitical event. These moves can result in significant price fluctuations, which can be difficult for traders to manage and respond to. Margin call. A margin call is a situation where a broker demands that a trader deposit additional funds into his trading account to maintain a minimum margin level. This can happen when the position of your trade moves against you and your losses exceed the available margin. Order execution issues. Order execution issues can occur when you place an order, but it is not executed due to technical or other reasons. This can be frustrating and can cause you to miss out on potential profits or increase losses. Account security breach. Account security breaches can occur when your account is hacked or compromised. This can result in unauthorized access to your funds and sensitive information, which can be a significant risk to your financial well-being. Summary. You should always be prepared for emergencies by having a contingency plan in place. This can include having backup technology, setting stop-loss orders to manage risk, and staying up to date with news and events that could impact the market. By being prepared for emergencies, you can minimize your risks and avoid significant financial losses. Power can go out, trading platforms can crash, internet connections can be disrupted, and quotes and data can be delayed. This used to be a much bigger issue because of technological unreliability when new technology first came out, but still, even today, power can still go out, platforms can still crash, and internet connections can still be disrupted. That is why you need to have backup plans in place. The backup plan nowadays for almost everybody is our phones. Make sure you have the trading apps installed on your phone for the broker that you have access to. And in the worst case scenario, you can always go onto your phone and close down open trades in case you lose your computer or lose your connection. So, have a backup plan in place so you can still access, manage, or close down trades in case of these emergencies. Rule 5. No gambling. Know the difference between gambling and trading. Gambling and trading are two distinct activities that differ in their goals, strategies, and outcomes. Gambling is an activity in which people participate with the aim of winning money or other prizes, relying on luck or chance rather than skill or knowledge. In gambling, there is typically no underlying value being created, and the outcome is entirely dependent on chance. Examples of gambling include playing casino games, buying lottery tickets, and betting on sports events. Trading, on the other hand, is the buying and selling of financial assets, such as stocks, bonds, currencies, or commodities, with the goal of generating profits by taking advantage of market inefficiencies or price discrepancies. Trading requires discipline, skill, knowledge, and research to identify profitable opportunities and manage risks effectively. In trading, there is an underlying value being created as investors are buying and selling assets that represent real economic value. Additionally, trading outcomes are not based solely on chance, but are affected by market conditions, economic factors, and investor behavior. Overall, the key difference between gambling and trading is the level of risk involved and the degree of control that traders have over the outcome. While gambling relies on luck and chance, trading requires a more disciplined and informed approach to manage risks effectively and generate profits over the long term. Gambling in trading is making trades without a proper analysis or strategy in place and relying purely on chance or luck. For example, let's say that a trader hears about a hot stock that is making headlines in the news. The trader does not have any prior knowledge or experience with the stock, but she decides to buy it based solely on the hype and excitement surrounding the stock. The trader does not perform any analysis or research on the stock, nor does she have a clear exit plan or stop-loss order in place. 
she is essentially making a blind bet on the stock, hoping that it will increase in value and provide a quick profit. Unfortunately, the stock does not perform as expected, and the trader ends up losing money. She realizes too late that she was gambling in the market rather than investing based on sound principles and analysis. In this example, the decision to buy the stock without proper analysis or strategy in place is a hallmark of gambling in trading. The trader is essentially taking a chance on the stock without any solid reasons to support her decision. This type of behavior can be risky and result in significant financial losses for those who engage in it. In simple terms, gambling is when you are going against the odds. That is like the person walking into the casino to play blackjack. They are gambling, they are going against the odds, the casino has the odds in its favor. As professional traders, we have to put the edge in our favor, like a casino. Having an edge does not mean we are going to win every trade, but we will win some trades and lose some just like the gambler. In other words, if there is not an edge built into that trade, then we do not take it. For example, placing a trade right in front of an economic news announcement or an interest rate decision would be a gamble because there is a 50-50 chance of that trade working out. We do not know if it is going to go up or if it is going to go down. It's a coin toss. Opening up a position in front of a company's earnings announcement is a gamble. It may be better than any odds you will have in the casino, but it is still a gamble because it's 50-50 chance. But we need to have an edge, an advantage, a higher probability in our favor. And that is what all our setup rules, entry rules, and management rules give us. They give us that edge. They put the edge slightly in our favor. And that is the difference between gambling and professional trading. Summary, it is important for you to avoid gambling in trading as it can lead to significant losses and erode trading capital. Trading is a complex and challenging activity that requires a disciplined approach and a sound trading strategy based on analysis and research. Relying on luck or chance is not a sustainable or reliable method for success in trading. Instead, you should focus on making informed decisions based on analysis and strategy. You should conduct thorough research and analysis, set clear stop-loss levels, and manage risk effectively. By doing so, you can reduce the risk of significant losses and maintain a consistent trading performance over time. Furthermore, you should understand that trading is a long-term game, and achieving consistent profits over time requires a disciplined approach and a commitment to sound trading practices. Traders who avoid gambling and instead focus on developing and implementing a solid trading strategy and building the skills necessary to be a professional trader have a much higher chance of long-term success. Rule 6. Daily Loss Limit Daily Loss Limit for Day Traders A daily loss limit is a stop loss for the entire day. This means setting a maximum amount of money that you are willing to lose in one day of trading. Once you reach that limit, you stop trading for the day to prevent further losses. Daily loss limit is something that applies to the active income short-term trader, day traders. Remember that you always put a stop loss on your trades, so why not also put a stop loss on your trading? A daily loss limit is a risk management tool used by day traders to limit their potential losses in a single trading day. It is the maximum amount of money that a day trader is willing to lose in a single trading day, and it helps to prevent traders from taking on excessive risk and blowing up their trading accounts. Day traders typically set a daily loss limit as a percentage of their trading capital or as a fixed dollar amount. For example, a day trader with a $50,000 trading account may set a daily loss limit of $1,000 or 2% of their trading capital. Or one can decide, say, I will lose no more than 1% of my trading capital of $25,000, therefore, if my account at any time is down $250,000, I will stop trading for the day. Once the daily loss limit is reached, you must stop trading for the day and not take any more positions. This helps to prevent you from making emotionally driven decisions and taking on additional risk to recoup their losses. Setting a daily loss limit is an important risk management strategy for day traders. 
It helps protect their trading capital and prevent them from experiencing significant losses that can negatively impact their financial well-being, trading psychology, and helps to limit their potential losses on any given trading day. For example, let's say a day trader has set a daily loss limit of $500 for themselves. This means they will stop trading for the day once they have lost $500. He starts the day with a trading account balance of $10,000 and makes several trades throughout the day. Unfortunately, some of the trades do not go as expected, and the day trader starts to incur losses. By midday, he had already lost $400. At this point, he decides to stop trading for the day as he does not want to exceed his daily loss limit of $500. Even though he has incurred losses on some of his trades, his decision to stop trading for the day once he hits his daily loss limit helped him to limit further potential losses. By sticking to his risk management plan, he avoided the risk of making impulsive and emotionally driven trades, which could have resulted in even greater losses. In this example, the day trader's daily loss limit of $500 has helped him to manage his risk and minimize his losses. By having a daily loss limit in place, Day traders can avoid the risk of making trades that are too risky and can potentially wipe out their trading accounts. Here is another simple way to put it. If you have three failed trades in a row, then you have to journal them before you can continue trading. The main reason for journaling your trades is to know if the failures are the result of mere randomness, because oftentimes market randomness can cause failed trades, and you also want to know if you are just having an off day or not. Anyone can have an off day. It does not matter who you are or what activity you are in. Even Cristiano Ronaldo had off nights on the football field once in a while, so we mortals just have off days. And traders, especially active income traders, will sometimes have off days. There are also things that happen in our lives that can affect our trading decisions. Like, for example, after having an argument with a wife or husband, you should ask yourself if it is a good time to trade, or a friend could be really sick, and that is on your mind, life happens. So there are times where maybe it is better not to trade, and instead go take care of whatever needs to be taken care of. So, for example, let's say, if we get three failed trades in a row, we want to know if we are feeling off emotionally. If so, we want to catch it early, and if it is just the market randomness and we are still following our plan, strategy, and rules, then... Can we go back to trading? Maybe, but after five failed trades, if that is in your strategy, then maybe you can say, I'm done for the day. And when it comes to our trading goals for the day, we should preferably not set actual monetary goals. An example of a monetary goal is saying, I want to make $1,000 a day, well knowing that we do not control market profits because most times the market wins and some days are better than others. We should set goals on the basis of facts that we can control, like we can control our own discipline to follow these 10 principles and rules. We can ask ourselves questions like, are we present every day for a fixed amount of time? Are we placing every trade that we set up? Are we following the rules? These are the actions, principles, and rules that we can control and basis on which to set our goals. We should not set goals based on money to be earned, at least not in the short term, Maybe money earned can be an annual goal. But for the short term, we can only focus on doing our job, then the money flows. It is sort of like stepping on a weighing scale. When we do not like what we see on the scale, we say, I need to lose some weight. Now, if we reach down and tune down the dial on the weighing scale, it will display that we weigh less. But in reality, nothing has changed. However, if we are serious about losing weight, then we have to focus on something else. We have to focus on how much we eat, what we eat, and how much we exercise. So if we focus on those things, then the next time we get on the scale, it will reflect a good result. So in other words, it is okay to set a goal of a certain amount of weight we want to lose, but most important is setting the goal of how we are going to achieve that by exercise and how we are going to eat. If we can achieve those goals, then weight loss happens. It is the same with trading. We will start to see profits by consistently doing those things that we can control. If we focus on the correct actions, principles, and rules that we can control in our trading, then our account grows. 
That is the kind of subtle shift of focus that we need, controlling our downside and setting goals on principles and rules we control. Summary. Using a daily loss limit is a crucial practice for day traders to limit their potential losses and protect their trading capital. Day trading involves taking risks, and you must be prepared for the possibility of losses. However, setting a daily loss limit can help you manage your risk and prevent significant losses that could jeopardize your trading career. By setting a daily loss limit, you can avoid making impulsive decisions and stick to your trading plan. You can also learn to be more disciplined and focused, leading to better decision-making and overall trading performance. Moreover, it is essential to understand that trading is a long-term game. It is not about winning every trade, but rather about managing risk and achieving consistent profits over time. Therefore, day traders should always use a daily loss limit to control their risk and limit potential losses. It is a simple but effective tool that can help you achieve your trading goals and succeed in this challenging and competitive world of trading. Rule 7. Position Size. Use small position sizes to start. Use small position sizes for at least many months. Large gains at the beginning also means large exposure. Do not take risks until you are consistent with your trading. Position sizing involves the calculation of the appropriate quantity of a financial instrument to be bought or sold in a specific trade, which can vary depending on the asset class, such as the number of shares in stocks, number of contracts in options and futures trading, and lot sizes in forex trading. Proper position sizing is essential for managing risk and maximizing returns in trading. Simplest Explanation Position sizing refers to determining the number of shares, contracts, or lots to trade based on the amount of money you are willing to risk on a trade. It is a technique used to manage risk and optimize returns in trading. By adjusting the size of your position based on your risk tolerance and the size of your trading account, you can limit potential losses while maximizing potential gains. Popular Methods for Determining Position Size Risk-Based Approach One popular method for determining position size is the risk-based approach. The position size is determined by the amount of risk you are willing to take on a given trade. This is often expressed as a percentage of your trading account balance, such as 1%, 2%, or 5%. For example, when you have a $10,000 trading account and are only willing to risk 2% of your account on a trade. Fixed Dollar Approach Another method for determining position size is the fixed dollar approach. The position size is determined by a fixed dollar amount per trade. For example, if you decide to risk $500 per trade, then your position size would be determined by the price of the financial instrument you are trading. It is important to note that position sizing should be based on your trading strategy, risk tolerance, and overall trading goals. It is also important to consider other factors, such as the liquidity of the instrument being traded and the impact of transaction costs on your returns. Proper position sizing can help you manage risk and improve your chances of success in trading. In the beginning, start small. Start with the beam on the ground. Use a small position size until you are making profits. If you are trading big, that means big exposure, and yet the beginning is when you make the most mistakes and blow accounts up. That can be discouraging. So, trade small and learn from those mistakes until you turn a profit, until a block of 30 or 50 or 100 trades shows a profit, then start bumping up your risk by increasing your position size. Always remember that if you cannot make money risking $20, then you cannot make money risking $200 or $2,000, so start small until you are confident and making consistent profits, then you can increase your risk. For example, let's say that you have a trading account with a total balance of $50,000 and you want to buy shares of Company X, which is currently trading at $100 per share. You perform a thorough analysis of Company X and believe that its stock price will increase by 10% over the next few weeks. So you decide to only risk 2% of your trading account balance on this trade. Using position sizing, the maximum amount that you can risk is calculated as follows. 
Maximum risk equals total account balance times. Maximum risk percentage, which equals $50,000 times 2%, which equals $1,000. Hence, the maximum amount of money that you risk as per your strategy will be $1,000. That is 2% of your account balance. Since you believe that Company X's stock price will increase by 10%, you set your target profit at $110 per share to capture the increase. This means that you stand to make a profit of $10 per share if your analysis is correct. Position sizing can help you determine the maximum number of shares of Company X that you can buy while still adhering to your risk management plan that is the maximum risk of $1,000, which is 2% of your account balance. Summary. Position sizing is a crucial aspect of successful trading. It involves determining the appropriate amount of money to invest in a trade based on your risk tolerance and the size of your trading account. By adjusting the size of your position based on these factors, you can effectively manage risk, optimize your returns, and prevent large losses that can wipe out your trading accounts. It also allows you to make the most of profitable opportunities while minimizing losses during unfavorable market conditions. Successful traders always use position sizing as a tool to manage risk and optimize returns. By adhering to sound position sizing principles, you can stay in the game for the long term and build a successful trading career. It is an essential component of a well-developed trading strategy and a key factor in achieving consistent profitability in the markets. Rule 8. Trade your plan. Trade only from your plan and only trade what you know. Why would you put your money at risk if you do not know what you are doing? A trading plan is a comprehensive set of rules and guidelines that you as a trader must follow to manage your trades and achieve your trading goals. A well-designed trading plan can help you stay disciplined, manage your risk, and improve your chances of success in the market. Simplest Explanation A trading plan is like a roadmap for traders to follow when they buy and sell assets like stocks, currencies, or commodities. It is a written plan that outlines what trades to make, when to make them, and how much money to put into each trade. A trading plan helps traders to stay organized, focused, and disciplined in their approach to trading. It can be adjusted over time as needed. By having a clear trading plan, you can better manage your risk and increase your chances of success in the markets. Key components of a trading plan includes a trading strategy. This outlines the approach the trader takes to identify opportunities in the market. This may include technical analysis, fundamental analysis, or a combination of both. An example of a trading strategy is a moving average crossover strategy. This strategy involves using two moving averages of different time periods, such as a 50-day moving average and a 200-day moving average. When the short-term moving average crosses above the longer-term moving average, it can be seen as a signal to buy, indicating that price is likely to continue rising. Conversely, when the short-term moving average crosses below the longer-term moving average, it can be seen as a signal to sell, indicating that price is likely to continue falling. Traders can use this strategy to identify trends in the market and make trades accordingly. They can also use other technical indicators, such as the Relative Strength Index, to confirm signals and further refine their entry and exit points. By using a consistent and well-defined trading strategy, traders can make informed decisions, manage risk, and increase their chances of success in the markets. Risk management is also another component of a trading plan which outlines the specific risk management techniques that is used to limit losses and protect profits. This may include stop-loss orders, position sizing, technical trailing stop, and risk-reward ratios. An example of risk management as a component of a trading plan is setting a maximum loss per trade. For instance, you may decide to never risk more than 2% of your trading account on any single trade. This means that if your account size is $10,000, you would not risk more than $200 on any one trade. By setting a maximum loss per trade, you can limit your potential losses and manage risk. This can help to preserve your capital and avoid blowing up your trading account. 
You can also use stop loss orders to automatically exit a trade if it moves against you beyond a certain point. This can help to minimize losses and protect your trading account. In addition to setting a maximum loss per trade and using stop loss orders, you may also implement other risk management strategies, such as portfolio diversification, monitoring your positions regularly, and avoiding high risk trades. By incorporating risk management as a key component of your trading plan, you can help to protect your capital and increase your chances of long term success in the markets. Entry and Exit Criteria this section of a trading plan outlines the specific criteria that are used to enter and exit trades. This may include specific chart patterns, indicators, or fundamental factors that signal a buy or sell signal. A breakout strategy can be an example of entry and exit criteria as a component of a trading plan is. In this strategy, a trader looks for stocks or any other asset in that matter that have been trading within a range for an extended period of time. Once the asset breaks out of this range, the trader may take a position in the direction of the breakout. For example, suppose a stock has been trading between $50 and $60 for several months. If the stock breaks above $60, you may enter a long position, expecting the stock to continue to rise, and may set an entry criteria that the stock must break above the $60 level and then confirm the breakout with other technical indicators, such as high trading volume or a bullish candlestick pattern. You may also set an exit criteria such that if the stock falls below a certain level, such as $55, you will exit the trade to limit your potential losses. Alternatively, you may set a trailing stop loss that moves up as the stock price rises to lock in profits and protect against losses. By using clear entry and exit criteria, you can take a systematic and disciplined approach to trading, which helps increase your chances of success in the markets. Trading frequency is also another component of a trading plan. It outlines how frequently you will make trades, whether you will be day trading, scalping, or swing trading, and how long you will hold positions. For example, swing traders hold positions for a few days to several weeks, taking advantage of medium-term price movements in the market, or a scalping strategy among many others. Scalping is a short-term trading strategy that aims to profit from small price movements in the market. Scalpers typically enter and exit positions within minutes, holding onto positions for only a few seconds or less. For example, a scalper may use technical analysis to identify a stock that is showing signs of short-term upward momentum. They may then take a long position and aim to capture a small profit as the stock price rises by a few cents. Once they have taken their profit, they will exit the position and look for another opportunity to scalp. Scalping requires a high level of skill and discipline. Traders must be able to react quickly to changing market conditions and make fast decisions. It is also a high-frequency trading strategy, as scalpers may make dozens or even hundreds of trades per day. By incorporating trading frequency into their trading plan, scalpers can ensure they are taking a systematic and disciplined approach to their trading, helping them to achieve their goals and manage risk. Trading Journal is another component of a trading plan. It is a log of all trades made, including entry and exit points, position sizing, and the reasons behind each trade. Keeping a trading journal is important for tracking progress, identifying areas for improvement, and maintaining discipline. A trading journal is an essential component of a trading plan that helps keep track of trades and analyze performance. Examples of trading journal components, date and time of the trade, this includes the date and time the trade was executed. Trade direction. This refers to whether the trade was a buy or a sell. Entry price. This is the price at which the trade was entered. Stop loss and take profit levels. These are the levels at which the trader will exit the trade if the market moves against them or in their favor. Trade size. This refers to the number of shares, lots, or contracts traded. Trade outcome. This includes the profit or loss made on the trade. Trading strategy. This includes the trading strategy used to enter and exit trade. Trading emotions. 
This includes the trader's emotions during the trade, such as fear, greed, or anxiety. Lessons learned. This includes any lessons learned from the trade, including mistakes made and areas for improvement. By keeping a trading journal, you can analyze your trading performance, identify patterns and trends, and adjust your trading plan. It helps you track your progress, learn from your mistakes, and improve your trading skills over time. Overall, a trading plan is an essential tool for traders to manage risk, stay disciplined, and achieve their trading goals. It should be a dynamic document that is regularly reviewed and updated as the trader's goals, strategies, and risk tolerance change over time. If you do not have a trading plan yet, stop trading and develop a trading plan. Trade only according to your trading plan consistently. Like they say, plan your trades and trade your plans. If you do not have a specific set of plans, then it is just going to get frustrating. Develop your plan and trade it. Keep it simple. That way you can stay consistent. Trade your plan is a common mantra in trading. It emphasizes the importance of following a well-defined trading plan rather than making impulsive or emotional trading decisions. For example, let's say you developed a well-defined trading plan for trading company X's stock. The plan includes the following parameters. Entry point, $50 per share. Stop loss, $45 per share. Target profit, $60 per share. Position size, 500 shares. You carried out a thorough analysis of company X's stock and believe that the stock is undervalued and will increase in value in the near future. On a particular trading day, company X's stock price drops to $48 per share seeing that you start to panic and begin to consider abandoning your trading plan and selling your shares at a loss. However, you remember the importance of following your trading plan and decide to stick to it, reminding yourself that the plan was based on thorough analysis and research, and a short-term drop in the stock price does not necessarily mean that the analysis was incorrect. You continue to hold your position in Company X's stock, despite the short-term drop in price. Eventually, the stock price rebounds, and you are able to sell your shares at a profit of $60 per share, just as you had planned. In this example, your decision to stick to your trading plan helped you stay disciplined, not making impulsive trading decisions based on short-term market fluctuations. By sticking to a well-defined trading plan, you were able to make a profitable trade based on thorough analysis and research. Summary a trading plan is an essential tool for any trader who wants to be successful in the long term. It provides a structured and systematic approach to trading, eliminates emotional decision-making, and increases consistency. A trading plan should include components such as risk management, entry and exit criteria, trading frequency, and a trading journal to track progress and identify areas for improvement. By creating and following a trading plan, you can better manage your risks, make informed decisions, and ultimately achieve your trading goals. Remember, trading without a plan is like driving to an unknown destination without a map. You might get lucky and reach your destination, but it is much more likely that you might end up lost or stranded. So take the time to develop and implement a trading plan, and you will be on your way to a more successful and fulfilling trading journey. Rule 9. Do not add to a losing trade. Do not average down dollar cost averaging. Not adding to a losing trade generally means that it is not a good idea to increase the size of a losing position in the hopes of making up for losses. This is because adding to a losing trade increases your exposure to risk, which can lead to larger losses if the market continues to move against your position. Simplest explanation. Not adding to a losing trade means if you buy something and the price starts going down instead of up, you should not buy more of it. This is because buying more of something that is losing you money can make your losses even bigger. It is like trying to fix a leaky boat by adding more water. It does not work and can make things worse. Instead, it is better to cut your losses and move on to another opportunity. Hence, you are advised to avoid adding to a losing position in the hopes of recovering losses because it increases your risk and reduces the likelihood of a successful outcome. When you add to a losing trade, 
you are essentially doubling down on a bad decision. You may do this because you are emotionally attached to the trade or are trying to recoup losses quickly. However, this approach can be dangerous because the market can continue to move against you, resulting in an even bigger loss. For example, let's say you bought 100 shares of a company at $50 per share and your trading plan included a stop loss order at $45 per share to protect your investment in case the price goes down. Unfortunately, the company reported some negative news. The stock price started to drop rapidly. The price goes below $45, triggering your stop loss order. So you sell your 100 shares at $45 per share, incurring a loss of $500. Feeling frustrated and disappointed, you might be tempted to buy more shares of the same company at that lower price of $45 with the hope of the price going back up in order for you to recoup that $500 loss. In this situation, you will be adding to a losing trade by more shares. Do not do it. Do not add to a losing trade. Because if you buy more shares and the price continues to drop, you will have even more shares losing value. The result will be an even greater loss. It is important to stick to your trading plan and not let emotions cloud your judgment. In this case, it might be better to move on to another opportunity and wait for better market conditions to invest in again. Remember, it is better to take a small loss than to risk an even greater loss. So instead of adding to a losing trade, many successful traders recommend cutting losses and moving on to the next opportunity. This involves setting stop loss orders to limit losses and sticking to a trading plan that incorporates risk management techniques. The key takeaway is that adding to a losing trade increases risk and reduces the likelihood of a successful outcome. It is important for you to manage your risk effectively and avoid emotional decision-making in the face of market uncertainty. By avoiding the temptation to add to a losing trade, you can stay disciplined and focused on your long-term trading goals. You can also avoid the emotional roller coaster of chasing losses and making impulsive trading decisions. Ultimately, the key to successful trading is to manage risk effectively and remain disciplined in the face of market uncertainty. For example, let's say you opened a long position on Company X's stock at $100 per share with a stop loss at $90 per share. You believe that the stock is undervalued and will increase in value in the near future. However, the stock price starts to drop soon after the trader enters the position. It reaches the stop loss level of $90 per share. You are now facing a loss of $10 per share on your initial investment. Feeling anxious and frustrated, you start to consider adding to your position in the hope that the stock price will rebound and you will be able to make up for the losses. However, you decide to avoid adding to your position, recognizing that adding to a losing position would only increase your risk exposure. It would be more prudent to cut your losses and exit the trade, sticking to your original stop loss level of $90 per share and closing out your position. In this example, your decision to follow your trading plan with discipline and adding to a losing trade helped you avoid making impulsive and emotional trading decisions based on the hope of making up for losses. Instead, you recognized the importance of risk management and discipline and cut your losses to protect your trading account balance. Hence, as traders, we do not average down, dollar cost average, because it is a strategy practiced by investors. Dollar cost average. Dollar cost averaging is an investment strategy that involves investing a fixed amount of money at regular intervals over a long period of time, regardless of market conditions. The idea is to buy more shares when prices are low and fewer shares when prices are high, thereby reducing the average cost per share over time. This approach is often used in stock market investments, mutual funds, and exchange-traded funds. The goal of dollar cost averaging is to reduce the impact of short-term market fluctuations on long-term investment returns. In simple terms, it means investing the same amount of money regularly over a long period of time to reduce the impact of short-term market fluctuations on investment returns. An investor regularly puts a fixed amount of money into an investment over time, regardless of whether the price of the investment is up or down. 
This helps to smooth out the impact of market volatility on the investor's returns and reduces the risk of investing a large amount of money at the wrong time. By investing a fixed amount of money at regular intervals, the investor buys more shares when prices are low and fewer shares when prices are high, which can lead to a lower average cost per share over time. Dollar cost averaging can be a useful investment strategy for long-term investors who are focused on accumulating wealth over time. However, for traders who are typically more focused on short-term gains and making trades based on market fluctuations, dollar cost averaging may not be the most appropriate strategy. Traders generally aim to make profits by buying and selling assets based on short-term market trends and price movements. Using dollar cost averaging may not be effective for traders as it involves investing a fixed amount of money at regular intervals, regardless of market conditions. Traders may be better served by making trades based on their analysis of market conditions rather than investing a fixed amount of money over time. Furthermore, traders often have different goals and risk tolerance levels compared to long-term investors. Traders may be willing to take on higher levels of risk in pursuit of higher returns and may use leverage and other advanced trading strategies to amplify their gains. For traders, the focus is on generating profits over the short term rather than accumulating wealth over time. Hence, we as traders never dollar cost average. That is an edge or an advantage for an institution, not for retail traders. Dollar cost averaging is often seen as an edge for institutions because they typically have a larger amount of capital to invest over a longer period of time. By investing a fixed amount of money regularly, institutions can smooth out the impact of market volatility on their investments. In contrast, retail traders may have limited funds and may not have the same level of access to market information and analysis that institutions do. As a result, Retail traders may find it difficult to execute a dollar cost averaging strategy effectively and consistently over the long term. Additionally, institutions may be able to negotiate lower transaction fees and commissions than retail traders, making it more cost effective for them to implement a dollar cost averaging strategy. Retail traders may have to pay higher fees, reducing the potential returns of their investments. For long-term investors, the idea behind dollar cost averaging is to reduce the impact of market volatility on investment returns by spreading out the investment over time. In dollar cost averaging, an investor invests the same amount of money at fixed intervals, such as weekly, monthly, or quarterly. The investor buys more shares when the price is low and fewer shares when the price is high, but the average cost per share remains constant. Over time, the investor's returns are determined by the average cost per share rather than the timing of their investments. Dollar cost averaging is often used in long-term investing strategies, such as retirement savings accounts, where the investor is focused on accumulating wealth over time. It can be used with a variety of investment vehicles, including stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. One potential benefit of dollar cost averaging is it can help remove the emotional element from investing, as the investor is investing a fixed amount at regular intervals, regardless of market conditions. This can help to avoid the temptation to try to time the market and make investment decisions based on short-term fluctuations in price. Overall, Dollar cost averaging can be a useful investment strategy for investors who want to reduce the impact of market volatility on their investment returns and focus on long-term wealth accumulation. For example, let's say an investor decided to invest in company X's stock, but she is unsure about the current market conditions and does not want to risk investing a large amount of money all at once. She decides to use dollar cost averaging to spread out her investment over time. She sets a budget of $1,000 per month for the next six months and plans to buy shares of Company X's stock with that budget each month. In the first month, the stock price is $50 per share. So the investor bought 20 shares of the stock with her $1,000 budget. In the second month, the stock price dropped to $40 per share, so she bought 25 shares of the stock with her $1,000 budget. In the third month, the stock price rose to $60 per share. 
So the investor bought 16.67 shares of the stock with her $1,000 budget. This process continues for the remaining three months, with the investor buying shares of the stock with her $1,000 budget each month, regardless of the stock price. By the end of the six-month period, the investor had invested a total of $6,000 and accumulated a total of 100.67 shares of the stock at an average cost of $59.50 per share. In this example, the investor used dollar cost averaging to spread out her investment over time and avoid investing a large amount of money all at once. By buying shares of the stock with her budget each month, regardless of the stock price, the investor was able to accumulate shares of the stock at an average cost that was lower than the highest stock price during the six-month period. Summary. While dollar cost averaging can be an effective investment strategy for long-term investors, traders may have different goals and risk tolerance levels that make this strategy less appropriate for their needs. Traders should consider other strategies, such as technical analysis, fundamental analysis, or trading with a well-defined risk management plan to achieve their objectives. Rule 10. Risk Management. Learn how to minimize losses. Risk management is the process of identifying, analyzing, and mitigating the potential risks associated with trading activities. Trading is inherently risky, and there are many factors that can influence the outcome of a trade, including market volatility, unexpected events, and unforeseen circumstances. Effective risk management involves understanding the potential risks involved in a trade and taking steps to minimize those risks. This can include setting stop-loss orders, diversifying your portfolio, and implementing hedging strategies. One of the key principles of risk management in trading is to never risk more than you can afford to lose. This means setting limits on the amount of money you are willing to invest in a particular trade and ensuring that you have adequate capital reserves to absorb any losses that may occur. Overall, risk management is an essential component of successful trading as it helps protect your capital and avoid catastrophic losses. By effectively managing risk, you can maximize your potential returns while minimizing your exposure to potential losses. For example, Let's say you are a trader who wants to invest in a stock that has shown a lot of promise, but you are concerned about the potential risks involved. Here is an example of how you might use risk management techniques to minimize your exposure. Set a stop-loss order. A stop-loss order is a tool that automatically sells a stock if it reaches a certain set price, which helps limit potential losses. Let's say you buy the stock at $50 per share and set a stop-loss order at $45. If the stock drops to $45 or lower, your shares will be automatically sold, preventing further losses. Diversify your portfolio. Another way to manage risk is to diversify your portfolio by investing in multiple stocks rather than just one. This spreads your investment across different sectors and helps reduce the impact of a single stock's poor performance. Do your research. Before investing in a stock, do your due diligence and research the company's financials, management team, and industry trends. This can help you make a more informed decision and reduce the risk of investing in a company with underlying issues. Be aware of market volatility to reduce risk. The financial markets can be unpredictable, with sudden dips or surges that can impact your investments. Keep an eye on market trends and news to avoid any unexpected losses. By using these risk management techniques, you can reduce your exposure to potential losses and protect your investment. While there is no way to completely eliminate risk in trading, managing risk effectively can help you achieve long-term success. We do not want to jump into something that is too volatile, trading impulsively, forcing trades, trading too big of a position size with no trading plan, and over-trading or gambling. All those are emotion-driven actions that will hurt us. So make sure that you put rules in place for those situations where your emotions are not helping you. We do need to cage our emotions, especially when they are hurting us. Take these laws seriously because they will protect you against your bad traits with which we all struggle. 
Get them built into your plan, journal every trade, review every block of 30, 50, or 100 trades. It is difficult to progress through this learning curve unless you master your own emotional weaknesses and find the solutions for them. And the way you are going to achieve this is through your journal, where you note down and record everything happening in relation to your trading and make improvements. Keep in mind that when it comes to trading, the actual mechanics of executing trades constitute only a mere 20% of your overall success. The remaining 80% heavily relies on various factors discussed earlier, including but not limited to strategy, risk management, emotional control, market analysis, discipline, and effective decision-making. Common Challenges to Traders and How to Overcome It a high percentage of traders face a variety of challenges in this dynamic and competitive world of trading. These challenges can be categorized into several key areas, including market volatility, emotional control, risk management, information overload, and technological issues. Overcoming these challenges requires a combination of knowledge, experience, discipline, and effective strategies. Let us explore each challenge in more detail. Here are the 10 common challenges faced by traders, along with potential ways to overcome them. Market volatility. Volatile markets can lead to unpredictable price movements. It refers to rapid and significant price fluctuations in the financial markets. It can create uncertainty and increase the risk of trading. Traders must be prepared to handle market volatility and adjust their strategies accordingly. You can overcome these challenges by conducting thorough research and analysis to understand the underlying market conditions, trends, and patterns, using technical analysis tools and indicators to identify trends and potential entry and exit points, applying risk management techniques, such as setting stop-loss orders to limit potential losses during volatile periods. Emotional control is another challenge faced by traders. Emotions play a significant role in trading decisions. Fear, greed, and impatience can cloud judgment, leading to impulsive trading decisions and poor trading outcomes. Overcoming emotional challenges requires developing a trading plan and sticking to it, which includes predetermined entry and exit points, practicing disciplined trading by following established rules and strategies, maintaining a rational mindset, and avoiding impulsive decisions based on emotions using techniques such as mindfulness, meditation, and self-reflection to manage and control emotions. Maintain a rational mindset. Risk management is another challenge to traders. Managing risk is crucial for traders to protect their capital and preserve long-term profitability. Some risk management challenges include determining an appropriate position size based on account size and risk tolerance, setting and utilizing stop-loss orders to limit potential losses and protecting profits, diversifying the trading portfolio to spread risk across different asset classes and markets, monitoring and adjusting risk levels as market conditions change, utilizing risk management tools and techniques, such as trailing stops and hedging strategies. Staying discipline is a huge challenge to traders. Lack of discipline can lead to deviation from trading strategies, rules, and not following your trading plan. To overcome this challenge, develop a trading plan and follow it consistently. Set clear rules for entry, exit, and position sizing and stick to them. Regularly review and evaluate your trading performance to identify areas for improvement. Information overload is another challenge, especially to new traders. Traders have access to an overwhelming amount of information, which can lead to analysis, paralysis, and confusion. To overcome information overload, focus on high-quality relevant information and filter out noise. Develop a set of trusted sources and indicators to guide decision-making. Use tools and resources that help filter and organize information data more efficiently. Develop a systematic approach to evaluate and interpret information, such as utilizing a checklist or creating a trading plan based on specific criteria. To novice inexperienced traders, lack of knowledge is a huge challenge. Insufficient knowledge can hinder one's ability to make informed decisions, understand market dynamics, and develop effective trading strategies. To overcome this challenge, you must invest in ongoing education and stay updated.
with market trends and developments. Utilize resources like books, online courses, and webinars to enhance trading knowledge. Seek mentorship or join trading communities to learn from experienced traders. Financial risk is the most significant of all challenges. Financial risk presents a challenge to traders as it can result in capital loss, drawdowns, and potential negative impacts on their trading performance and overall financial well-being. To overcome financial risks, set aside an emergency fund to handle unforeseen circumstances or losses. Trade with money you can afford to lose and avoid over-leveraging. Implement sound risk management strategies to limit potential losses. Time management can also be another challenge to traders. Trading requires effective time management to analyze markets, execute trades, and monitor positions. To overcome time management challenges, create a trading schedule and allocate specific time slots for market analysis and trading activities. Use technology and automation tools to streamline trading processes. Prioritize important tasks and eliminate distractions during trading hours. Markets are constantly evolving, which causes a challenge of adaptability. You need to adapt to changing conditions and must continuously adjust your strategies and approaches to changing market conditions and evolving trends. To overcome this challenge, stay updated with market news, economic events, and policy changes. Continuously evaluate and adjust trading strategies based on market conditions. Learn from past trades and adjust your approach accordingly. Technical issues is also another challenge to traders. Trading relies heavily on technology, and technical glitches or connectivity problems can disrupt trading activities. To minimize technological challenges, use reliable and stable trading platforms from reputable brokers or institutions. Have backup plans in case of system failures or internet connectivity issues, such as a secondary computer, mobile trading app, and backup internet connection. Stay updated with the latest technological advancements and security measures. Test trading strategies and tools in a demo or simulated environment before implementing them with real funds. By addressing these common challenges with the appropriate strategies and mindset, you can enhance your trading performance and navigate the markets more effectively. Remember that consistency, continuous learning, and a disciplined approach are key to overcoming these challenges successfully. For those just starting out, beginning your trading journey. Trading is a career that has the potential to be both lucrative and exciting, but it can also be risky and stressful. If you are just beginning your career journey with trading, it is important to approach it with caution, discipline, and a willingness to learn. The first step in starting a career in trading is to educate yourself. The markets are complex and there are many financial instruments, trading strategies, and technical indicators that you need to understand. There are many resources available for learning about trading, including books, online courses, and trading communities. Start by reading a few introductory books about trading and following reputable sources for financial news. Once you have a basic understanding of trading, it is important to practice with a demo account. Most trading platforms offer demo accounts that allow you to trade with virtual funds in a simulated trading environment. This will help you get familiar with the trading platform and test out different trading strategies without risking real money. It is recommended to practice with a demo account until you feel confident and have a good understanding of the trading platform and the market. When you feel ready to start trading with real money, it is important to start small. Never risk more than you can afford to lose and avoid over-leveraging your positions. It is recommended to start with a small amount of capital that you can afford to lose. This will help you manage your risk and avoid the emotional stress that comes with trading larger sums of money. As you gain more experience and confidence, you can gradually increase your position size. One of the most important aspects of trading is developing a trading plan. A trading plan is a set of rules and guidelines that define your trading strategy, including your entry and exit points, risk management strategy, and position sizing. Having a trading plan will help you stay disciplined and avoid impulsive decisions based on emotions or market noise. Your trading plan should be based on your personal risk tolerance, financial goals, 
and trading style. Trading involves risk, and risk management is a crucial aspect of trading. It is important to manage your risk properly. This includes setting stop-loss orders to limit your losses, diversifying your portfolio, and avoiding over-leveraging your, your positions. Never risk more than you can afford to lose, and always have a plan in place to manage unexpected events or market volatility. It is also important to keep learning. Trading is an ongoing learning process, and it is important to stay up to date with the latest developments and trends in the markets. Attend trading seminars and webinars, read trading blogs and forums, and follow reputable trading experts on social media. Learning from experienced traders can help you avoid common pitfalls and improve your trading skills. In conclusion, trading can be a lucrative and rewarding career, but it requires discipline, patience, and a willingness to learn. If you are just beginning your career journey with trading, start by educating yourself, practicing with a demo account, starting small, developing a trading plan, managing your risk, and continuing to learn. Remember that trading involves risk, and it is important to approach it with caution and manage your risk properly. With the right mindset and approach, trading can be a fulfilling and successful career. The End Thank you for reading The 10 Laws of Trading Any Financial Market. I hope you found the book informative and helpful in your trading journey. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please feel free to reach out via email at info at themintrader.com. I would love to hear from you and help in any way I can. I'm always happy to connect with readers and fellow traders, and I look forward to hearing from you. Happy trading!